Hey there, fellows. Today we're actually going to look at something that I've just learned briefly how to use. It's called the uh, Sensu, and it's a monitoring system that allows you to check for certain things that you may not be able to check with uh, other monitoring systems. I mean, Nagios would be another alternative to Sensu, but I find this one a little bit easier to use, a little bit easier to uh, understand from the get go. Um, they use pretty much the same concepts, but I think this documentation for a beginner is a little bit easier to understand and um, we're going to go ahead and walk through a basic installation of it just go walking through the documentation um, and uh, yeah it's, it seems pretty pretty cool so right at the beginning we'll go to sensu.io and get started uh, in this case we're actually going to go to most likely yeah we're going to go to the complete installation guide so we can get the proper information for our specific platform we're going to do this on Ubuntu, uh, the subsystem for Linux for Windows. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy over the commands that we need. And it's going to go ahead and update the repositories that we need in order to go ahead and install the Sensu backend. Um, this basically just allows you to have a web GUI that you can uh, access um, to set up the checks if you want to do it through the GUI. Everything on this. You could definitely do through uh, the command line. You don't really need the uh, uh, web GUI, but it's it's good for a beginner to have. So uh, when I touch this first, I started with the web GUI. So we're gonna go ahead and just follow the instructions. It knows we're on the Ubuntu Debian now, so we're gonna start copying the config templates, and then we're gonna go ahead and start the backend service. And now that it's started, let's take a look and make sure that it's started. It's not running. So even though it says, excuse me, that it started, now it's already running. It's pretty weird. Um, let's see what happened. So it does say that it's running. So let's just continue and see uh, what else we need to do here. So we're actually going to go ahead do this, copy that one, and I'm just going to do those, and then I'm going to change this over to the password, and we're going to do that, that's fine, and initialize, let's see, okay, so successfully upgraded database, so we should be okay, and now we should be able to open the web UI. So uh, it's supposed to be on localhost 3000. So I don't think that's going to be the key. Oh, it is okay. Um, I thought I was going to have to put in the IP address of my laptop or my computer. And you can already see that the dashboard is pretty clean. Um, you don't really have to do much unless you want to graph it. Then you'll have to do other um, other plugins for stuff like that. But we're looking at entities. Then this is really where the important stuff occurs: the checks, the filters, the handlers, mutators. Uh, the three important ones for like a first basic monitoring system would be the checks, the filters, and the handlers. Essentially, the check is just a uh, script or the specific item that you want to check. The filter is how you're going to handle certain statuses, and then or the yeah, and then the f the handler is what to do about it, right? So the handler would be something like an email handler or a Slack handler if you want a message sent to your Slack, stuff like that. Um, so we're actually gonna go ahead and continue. Uh, it does tell us to check the health. We know that it's working because I'm able to get in, so that's good. And then we need a sense of control. Uh, this is uh, another part of it. So we installed the backend, which is the database, the, um, the HTTPD or Apache 2, depending. And then this is the API and command line utility. Uh, so this is what allows us to do right here. Sensu control configure. We're going to connect that to our backend. So that should be relatively easy. We're going to go ahead and copy this into a text file. And then we're going to change this over to just the basic stuff that we just created. Actually, I don't need to save this, but and there we go. Now we have our Sensu control connected to your Sensu backend URL. That way we can just 
you start firing away um, API commands from the command line here and it'll reach the back end. So we should be good to go here. Um, we don't need to change the password, so we're good to go. I'm still gonna use the, the same machine to install the agent, and that way uh, it doesn't get too confusing in the beginning. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy over this string to add another one of the repository um, and its script to add the uh, GPG key. And here we go. We're gonna go ahead and install the agent all really quickly, all really simple. So you'd probably like, basically you would run the first step, all this stuff down till here on uh, your server. And then any machines that you wanna monitor, you'd install the agent. So you start from here. Uh, as soon as that's ready, then this is when you go ahead and configure this. Now, because this is a very simple uh, setup and we're not doing anything crazy in terms of uh, setting up a uh, multiple different servers and this is all going to be on the same server it technically doesn't need to connect to anything except itself so if you see the default values here you might want to change this you can do it two different ways and it says that, that start flags are recommended um, but then what I notice is that it tells you to do service sensor agent start right so this is what kind of what through little bit of a wrench in uh, the documentation uh, when I deployed it. So configure and start, it tells you you can configure the Sensu agent with Sensu agent start. Now just by its own, like Sensu agent start. And then there are certain flags that you want to throw on it, right? So the Sensu agent, we could do backend URL, right? And then you give it the WS because uh, it's a WebSocket routine and we're going to go through 12700 dot one uh, 80 80 and so on and so forth right uh, when you do that the user that you're on so in my case go ape is the one that's starting it I did notice that when you run it like this the sensu agent actually opposite uh, this one your your user starts it and that's kind of what you want um, we're gonna do sudo and now it's started right so let's go to status and it's actually running so um, it seems like the only way that I got it working even on my other deployment was to actually use the YAML file in Etsy Sensu uh, called agent.yaml and that's where you can actually specify um, the different settings that you want to specify so let's just run through that configuration file real quick um, make this bigger so that it's actually visible um, Basically, this is actually pretty important if you want it. So we'll actually take a look on the other side. Um, yeah, let's take a look at Sensu right here. And let's go to Entities, and you'll see that my desktop is here, right? And it's showing that uh, it's Ubuntu 18.04 because I'm using the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, right? So. Um, but what you also notice is a few things here. Uh, the subscription is just it, the entity and host name. Uh, the host name is the host name of the machine. And then you have all of the other information, what kind of OS, platform, uh, network adapters, and stuff like that. The important bit is if, so in, in my case, there were older boxes that I didn't create that were old with phone systems and stuff like that. They needed to be monitored, but the host name was different than the newer naming convention. So we hadn't gotten around to changing the older naming conventions. And so I had to manually for a few of them, just give it the proper name that I wanted it to be called instead of just being, you know, the, like something like this, I'd want to rename it, right? Um, the namespace, we're going to leave default, but namespaces could be anything from different types of systems that you're monitoring. Let's say some are um, HTTP servers, some maybe web servers, some maybe database servers, stuff like that. You can classify them under different namespaces. Um, or if you had different applications that you might be running, you can classify all of your different applications and monitor all of your different applications. Um, so for example, if you're following along from our other videos um, with the MAS, you could have your classification of rack controllers and region controllers and then have a different namespace for each. I wouldn't necessarily do that. I'd probably just monitor my MAS 
in one namespace. So you have a Maz namespace, then you have a you know website namespace, stuff like that essentially. Um, and the subscriptions is kind of important because when you start getting into checks, it's gonna push the checks to whatever subscription that you tell it to, right? So um, let's say I just do a single check now and I want it to be applied to this. I would have to give it this subscription and say this entity essentially. Um, you would want to classify every subscription as something either separate or similar to the namespaces. Um, you could do, for example, like if you're going to check, if you're going to check for asterisks and make sure that asterisks is running, you'd only want to apply that on PBXs. Whereas if you're going to check for MySQL um, services, then you're going to only want to apply that to databases, right? So very similar to that, um, except that like, for example, if you have a Maz, you're still going to want to monitor HTTPD or Apache 2, but it's in a different namespace. So namespace is just like a classification of different entities. And then the subscription is you want you really want to make sure that your subscriptions are aligned more with what services you're going to be monitoring on those entities. Uh, labels are, I mean, you can label them that way you have a little bit more of an understanding of what they are. Maybe you want to label this one like, you know, backup host or something like that. Uh, if you have a bunch of, maybe you have a SAN or something like that um, and you want to monitor that one, but then you want to make sure that you're familiar with which SAN that is. Usually everybody goes by host name. So this is kind of like uh, tagging. It's not that important. Um, same thing with annotations. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, and agent configuration, this is where it gets important. So uh, if you wanted to send it to a different backend, let's say that the backend was installed on a different machine, which it typically is, so you're gonna wanna actually uh, change this WS12700.18081 and send that to whatever the IP address of your other accessible backend is. Um, the API port, the API configuration is on this machine, so you can leave this default as well, unless uh, you're doing something specific that you need to change that. The log level is always, it's set to debug um, by default, which is good for a first installation. You can always change that later. But yeah, essentially now you have an entity that's available to you. And then if you continue down the list, you'll see that you can actually start sending uh, different events, right? So if we do that, we can then go into Sensu and you'll notice that there's a warning now and there's an event that says check MySQL could not connect to MySQL, right? And if we go back to this, you'll see that you can post, right? So we're doing send post to application JSON and then we're checking and the name of the check is uh, check MySQL status and the status is one. So uh, following Linux logic, status one means application error. And then to create an okay, change the status from uh, to zero, right? And then resend it. So if we do the same thing, but we change this to a zero and then we send it, then we'll go back into here and it's successful. And the really cool part is that this is actually very real time. It's very fast. Even when I've used it in, in like larger, different environments, even outside of it being on the same, uh, system, it's still very fast. Um, and yeah, the next steps, that's it. We've pretty much done with step one and two. Uh, and now you can manually set, trigger an event that sends an alert to your mailbox, or you wanna check, to, you wanna create a check to monitor CPU usage and send Slack alerts. So see, this is where it kind of all gets really nice and you can collect metrics um, with a sensor check and a handler to populate metrics in InfluxDB if that's something you're looking for. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's, I guess, uh, pretty much it for this one where we can do this, uh, this little check here and register different assets in the next video. Um, and the cool part is, as it says in the documentation, they have the same specifications between Sensu Checks and Nagios plugins. So you can use Nagios check plugins with Sensu. So it's, it's like, if you're familiar with Nagios, then you know, Sensu is not that hard of a leap and there's really not too much different technically then at that point. Um, it's just, do you like the way it looks essentially and it doesn't have certain capabilities that Nagios doesn't. I haven't touched Nagios at all, so I can't really speak on that. But um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna go ahead and end this video here, and next time we'll get back to uh, monitoring with certain assets and checks. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. Um, this time I'm actually gonna include my email. Uh, that way you can reach me if you have any questions. Thank you. Have a good one.